Good morning. Uh, Anson Tebbets with the Agency of Agriculture, Food and Markets. Um, thank you for coming today. Uh, we want to thank all our partners here. Um, of course, the governor, uh, his leadership through this, uh, Senator Welch, his team. We also want to thank uh, the Mazas for showing us uh, the damage that they've incurred. We also have some dairy farmers with us uh, within the region also have sustained a, a lot of crop damage. So um, right now it's all about um, trying to recover and get back to normalcy. Um, and we want to thank um, a lot of our partners from USDA are here as well. Uh, University of Vermont has been a wonderful partner with us and we thank, um, if, whether it's the, the president being here, whether it's Mike Sherling helping us out at the, uh, um, at the center in Berlin, also UVM Extension, Roy and his team, uh, Heather, all of them. So there's a number of partners that are gonna help our farm community get back to normal. Uh, but right now I wanna turn it over to uh, the governor. Well, thank you all very much. And uh, you know, when I go through some of the fields and see what Paul and his family have experienced here, I have my small business hat on and uh, I can see the devastation the frustration as well. I mean, you have berries still on the vine, you have apples still there on the trees, um, but they can't be utilized. And uh, this is going to be a long, long-term recovery for them and for many parts of the state with different experiences. Uh, but uh, this isn't short-term, this can't be fixed in a year. It's going to be multiple years of hard work and trying to recover. So. We're here to find out what we can do together with our federal partners, state partners, and everyone else uh, coming to the aid of their fellow Vermonters. So, um, so again, um, thank you for the tour. Uh, the many other farmers here as well uh, that have experienced uh, somewhat the same thing. And, uh, and again, this is going to be a long road to recovery. Senator Welch. Okay. <clears throat> I want to thank uh, Paul, you and your daughter for uh, showing us your farm and it's, uh, it's pretty heartbreaking. You know, this has been a successful uh, farm that is a major part of the community. Uh, Paul has been farming since he was 11 and uh, that's what he loves to do. And in this community, everybody loves to come down here and pick berries. Uh, it's part of that ecosystem we have here in Vermont where uh, a lot of the folks who live in the area but don't have the capacity to work as hard as this guy works and his daughter, they like to come and pick those berries. And it's pretty devastating to see the damage that that flood did. And here we are on this magnificent summer day, and it was only uh, days ago uh, that there was 20 feet of water uh, where we're standing. Uh, the, the road back is incredibly uh, challenging and uh, you know, I just want to acknowledge, Paul, to you and your family, uh, how, uh, uh, how sad we all are that this happened. Uh, our goal, uh, the federal delegation, uh, Senator Sanders and Congresswoman Ballant, will be to do the best we can and work every day to try to get financial aid, because that's what our farmers need and our small businesses need. They really, alone, is not going to do it uh, when they have debt already, uh, if they're going to get back in business and there's got to be disaster relief uh, that does provide cash and that's a project that's a that but that's what we're working on because that's what we're hearing people really need and I see the Conan farm you had some damage yeah, we do. there as well and you know that iconic dairy farm right there uh, at the uh, exit 11 on the interstate this is the heart of Vermont and these are the folks who are behind it uh, so uh, we'll work with the governor and we'll work with the federal delegation to do everything we can. The one thing I do want to say, Paul, you push back, you push back on me a little bit because you told me you don't want to do books. You want to be on the track. No, with, uh, anything to go through Katie because she's, she's but, a lot better than me. What we're asking. I get frustrated. <laughs> But what we need, Katie, mm -hmm. uh, you tell your father. Yes, I'll pass it on. <laughs> That's right. We need documentation uh, of what the losses are on this farm, on the Conan farm, on every farm, because that's the raw information that uh, Senator Sanders and Congresswoman Ballant and I need to make the case uh, when there is going to be a disaster relief bill on the floor. So that's a chore, and if you're accustomed to being out in the field picking the berries and doing the work that uh, is incredibly hard to do, we do need Katie, uh, we do need the Conan Farm uh, to be providing us the documentation uh, so that we can try to provide some help. But thank you so much for all you've done all these years. I, I hope when this goes out, 
this doesn't hurt my business. Don't make it worse because I do have seven fields. We have probably one third of my produce left, which I do want to sell on my stands, and it's, it will be good. <laughs> so, <I like. laughs> this is kind of a catch 22. Can, can I put it in an order? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I do. After the flood, it's, she went on Facebook and she's done a lot of great things on Facebook. So I thank my daughter for that. People thought we were out, but we had we have a lot more ground. Like the right. corn's coming from the Fay Farm. The blueberries are from come Colchester. We try not to put our eggs all in one basket. That's smart. So. You want to say anything, Deborah? You want to? Yeah, just, you know, I just want to also on behalf of UVM. So many of our employees, our students, and all were affected by the floods, and it's been so uneven across the state, as you all know. We just walked down to the river, and it's so quiet, and it seems so peaceful, and it wasn't recently. Um, Paul showed us the uh, level to which the water rose, and it's just hard to believe that we would all be underwater if, uh, if we were here sometime back. So just want to, I'm here to pledge UVM support. Um, Mike Scherling and others are helping with the emergency operations. Our extension team is all over the state. And we've got a drone team here that today is uh, willing to and, and, and prepared to do a before and after and do some of the documentation for Paul and his family um, to see where the damage was. So we are here for the long run, too. We're part of the state. Um, we're the state's flagship. And uh, we will do all we can to help out. So thank you for bringing us here. And Paul, thank you. You, you have our um, a strong support, and we really feel badly for what you and your family are going through. Thank you. I think we'll open up to a few questions if you have any. We're confident we will receive some help. Is it going to be enough to satisfy every need? No. No, nope. we're going to have to dig deep. We're going to have to be creative. We're going to have to you know, reach into every pot in order to get through this. So the federal government has been extremely responsive and have been very, very helpful to us. And we expect they will do more. Our congressional delegation has done a lot already and will do more in the coming months. Um, but, um, but again, I have to reiterate, uh, this, this isn't going to be enough for everyone. Uh, because when you think about the devastation I've seen over the last week, whether it's uh, personal homes, whether it's other businesses, um, it's just not enough resources to, to do that, to accomplish that. So again, I think Paul made a good point as well. Um, there, you know, it's, it is a catch-22 in some respects. Uh, we want people to know that we've been hurt, uh, but we're not down. You know, we, uh, we still have produce to sell. They have produce to sell. One third of their crop is still available. It's the same with tourism. We went through this with Irene. Um, you know, the, the message was uh, we're impacted. Uh, many of our roads were closed. Many of our villages and towns were, were devastated. Um, but we want to also say we're open for business. Many of the parts of the state weren't affected. So we need people to continue to come to Vermont. That's, that will help us as much as anything. Buy our products. Visit us. Come tour here. Um, so that's the message we need to uh, continue to deliver. But as well, understanding the impact that Vermonters have, have faced and are facing. Right. The damage. Could you explain more as to why that's so well, we've got to get a number. How much damage was done right here on the Maza farm? How much damage was done uh, on the Conan farm? Uh, our vegetable growers, how much revenue did they lose because they lost their crop? That makes it concrete, so we're talking specifically and not generally, and that's essential. So getting that information is important. And I heard you, Governor, talking about yeah. uh, homeowners who think they can fix, fix it themselves. It's still important for them to let us know uh, because then the county designation can change. So it's a real chore on top of everything else you're doing uh, to have to deal with this detail. Uh, but it's important, and I think you said it well. If it's not important to you, it helps others who need that support. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
I expect, I expect that we are going to need another supplemental appropriation. And it's not just because of what happened here in Vermont. I mean, obviously we need it, but the storms, the wild weather, the heat, the fires all throughout the country are resulting in a level of demand on FEMA that we haven't seen in the past. So that's, that's bad news and good news. It's bad news that there's wild weather events are affecting so many uh, people in our country. It's good news in the sense that it creates some bipartisan support to provide help all around the country. I think it would, unless we waive that, yeah. How do you feel about the viability of that? Well, I feel pretty good in the Senate because there have been so many Republican senators who've approached me and, and uh, Senator Sanders of offering help, whatever I can do. And it includes very conservative folks, Senator Grassley from Iowa, Senator Kennedy from Louisiana. So they get it uh, because these weather events, you know, Louisiana, for instance, is no stranger to incredible weather events. So I have some confidence on the basis of my uh, discussions with Republican colleagues that this is in a special category of a natural event. Governor, many farms across Vermont, like Wolf Farm, do have access to that federal money, but that's not the case for the for Canada's farms. My question for you is what action at the state level are you looking to take to make life easier for those Canada's farms and industry as a whole? Well, as you know, we're still trying to develop a plan for the 20 million that we were able to scrape together as bridge funding, so to speak, to give some businesses throughout the, the state some cash. Now, I'm not saying they're going to be included, uh, but obviously we're going to look at every business in Vermont and uh, try to give them whatever help we can to keep them going. So uh, stay tuned. I mean, this isn't over. Uh, we're going to do, again, everything we can to help Vermonters get through this, businesses and individuals alike. And this is a question for John. Not every farm has a Katie to help with the, you know, pushing the paper and um, the farm and documents and all of that. Is there anything that FSA can do to provide some support, bureaucratic support, for small farms who maybe don't have that, So just to introduce myself, I'm the head of FSA in Vermont right now for my sins. Um, but um, our staff are working full time um, and they will answer any questions that a producer puts to them. And I'd like to emphasize what Senator Welsh said, we need to report uh, our, our crop livestock field losses to FSA. Um, we, in our secretarial uh, designation, hinges to a degree on a 30% loss definition. And, um, and yet I'd also like to emphasize, uh, and I have a sheet here, we have many programs that do not depend on a secretarial designation. We can make them effective now, as does NRCS. Um, but anybody who calls our staff, they are absolutely dedicated to walking them through the process and helping them uh, get whatever information is required to make sure that they are fully, um, the programs are fully available to them to the extent that they are. Hope. Yeah, the, the, the extension folks and Roy Beckford's here, I think, um, his team's all over the state, um, helping both with trying to assess the damage to provide support for where to go from here and with the reporting and with education after. So there's a lot, as, as uh, Governor uh, Scott and Peter Welch, have, uh, Senator Welch have said, there's a long recovery of, ahead of us. There's many, many aspects to it. And um, uh, the extension team and, and all of the university will be uh, at the table uh, to help for as long as it takes. said they're trying to do something now going in you, you were trying to do something now yeah. <coughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> well, this is Michelle from my office. We're hearing that, and there's practical challenges. So uh, the, the three federal offices are going to work together to do anything we can to facilitate getting that information uh, that we need in Washington. Uh, you know, this is one of the hassles that is... Uh, in a way overwhelming. I mean, you see Paul and any, all of us who walked around, it's astonishing the amount of work and effort that goes into making this place Mazda's farm. It takes constant attention, incredible willingness to work, and hard work, and then this catastrophe happens, and the amount of work that faces Paul and, and Katie and the family to get this back operational and just to keep those one-third of crops that are still good is enormous. But on top of that, we really do need the information. So the, we'll do all we can to make it easy uh, and then hope that Katie <laughs> will persuade her father <laughs> to sign off uh, when she does the work, okay? On top of the list. All right, thanks. Take one more question. Paul needs to get back to work. Hanson? Final question. Final question. You and I have had conversations about how much it will take to recover. It will take, you know, we have to talk about how long you feel at this point it will take to recover and, you know, how much you do to do Well, we've got lots of layers as we talked about here. So I think we've got some immediate needs that we need to need to figure out. You know, I think this week a lot of work's being done just about cleanup and assessing the damage. A lot of our farmers now are able to get behind the computer and start reporting in. That's going to happen. And then we've got some discussions about, uh, you know, viability uh, going forward, um, the resources they're going to need to get to the next step. Um, and then, um, you, know, you know, our dairy farmers are faced with um, some issues about feed. So a lot of discussions are going on. Are we going to have enough feed locally to help because of the corn crop, uh, bad weather for hay? Uh, so that will begin. Uh, and then we've got to think about uh, you know, a situation with, with Paul about next year. Uh, what does he want to do? Uh, what resources can make him viable to continue to do what he wants to do for the next planting season? So it's, it's all stages. It may be one week, three weeks, three months, a year. Uh, and it's going to take all the resources from Congress, the state, uh, our partners at the University of Vermont and the Extension Service, uh, and then private, uh, private donations. Uh, that's another aspect that's really helping now. Vermonters are stepping up, people around the country are contributing, and those funds are reaching farmers now, which is really important. Some bridge loans, some bridge, actually bridge cash, which is really important. So lots of, lots of stages, but it, as the governor has mentioned, it's going to be a long haul, uh, but we're, uh, we're all in it to get to a better place. Thank you. Katie's graduating next year from UVM with a food science degree, so she'll be back full time here. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.